pictures. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their pictures. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum too and my mom put my pants in the freezer, the gum froze up and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Marcia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all. So they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. 
works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here. Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away. Huh? Where? <laughs> ah! I don't want to go into the refrigerator. Stop! I was joking. <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't going to chew it anymore. I'd never do that. Not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? Fixies go to Fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let them. like me can always count on luck. You know, Fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt, because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection. Like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah. But how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. 
Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! Grampus, he needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid! As you fixies say... Tish! Today's lesson is done. Hooray! Come on! Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design you used there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so. Caution and care make accidents rare. <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. The balloon. No way. You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents going to do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka going to do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years, I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. Ah. 
I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude. So, they've reached the spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the Fixie's flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay, by the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Batteries. be a strong and splendid tree. <laughs> She's talking with a flower pot. <laughs> oh, you scared me. <laughs> Do you like it? Like what? My seedling. Don't you see? It will grow into a huge tree. And there, amongst the green leaves, will be beautiful yellow lemons. Class! From that thing, lemons? <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll grow into a tree. All it needs for that is to gather energy. Get energy from where? From our sun. <laughs> the sun? It'll be so slow. Oh, batteries would be faster than the sun. Batteries? I really don't think so. Tula, do you know how much energy they have? Let's just bury a bunch of those batteries in here, and you'll be watching your lemon plant shoot up into a tree. Are you positive? Absolutely. And where can we get the batteries? Over there. Professor Eugenius has a whole box full of them. Batteries! Batteries! We use them every day and need them by the ton. the first lemons before the week's over. The first battery in the world was made in Italy more than 200 years ago. 
when two different kinds of metal were placed in salty water, electricity started flowing through a wire from one piece of metal to the other. Many years have passed since then, but batteries still work in pretty much the same way. Today, you can find batteries being used for electricity just about everywhere. Tiny batteries are used inside of wristwatches, while big batteries can power cars and even ships. With new batteries being produced by the millions, we have to think, how should we get rid of the old ones? You can't just throw away batteries because they'll poison our soil and water. The best way to dispose of batteries is to take them to a special collection station that sends them to factories for recycling. Yes, yes, it's a terrible idea to bury batteries. You can kill any plants that are growing there. <gasps> and this is the very reason why Professor Eugenius puts all of his used batteries in that box over there, so he can dispose of them properly. Hey, where are they? Oh, my seedling, we harmed you. What? Where are the batteries? They're in the flower pot. How come? So the lemons would grow faster? From the batteries? Who came up with that idea? It will die! Hurry! We gotta go save it! Huh. The soil's contaminated. We've got to find a new home for the seedling. But where? Over there. There's a pot with healthy soil. Let's do it! Batteries! Batteries! will grow big and strong with branches full of beautiful lemons and oranges. And watermelons. It's a lemon tree fire. Will you ever stop going too far, like with the batteries? Well, anyhow, batteries are cool, right? Look how many appliances can't work without them. You're right. Appliances can't work. Look, the seedling's coming back to life. It really is! Tula, tell us, isn't it splendid? <gasps> splendid! But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't 